So next up, we've Dr. Michael Kenny from our adult education department, who's going to talk to us about the Green Forum, the Minute Green Forum that was recently established. So I'll just pass you over to Michael. Yes, sir. Move to the next slide there, Jim. Yeah. So you just, to move your slides, you yeah. just hit that arrow. Great. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. That's super. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everyone. You know, it's amazing how you're standing in front of microphones and how nervous you get. And I was amazed when we came out of the, the required lockdowns, how nervous I was to actually go into groups of students. When I was going back, you know, I work with, I'm in the adult education department and I work with postgrads who are all adults. And adults can be very frightening sometimes because they know more than you do. And I know when I was going to have my first class back in September, I was actually physically sick before I went over to class. And, you know, you can't walk in. You have to sort of show up a confident face. But it's, it's, I was amazed how nervous I was. But Jim and Dorina and Maria and colleagues, it's wonderful. And congratulations to the Maynooth Green Campus for having this day. It's a great thing to do. And I'm delighted because, in a sense, by doing it, you're also reaching out here because I'm going to talk and share a little bit of information about the Green Forum, the Maynooth Green Forum. And I just have six slides to go through with you. And um, I'm Michael Kenny. I have been working in Maynooth for a number of years in the college, in the adult education department, which is just across the road, the Kilcock Road. It's a very outward looking department. So our work, the work of the department is predominantly in various communities out around the country and at European level and in some of the southern countries in the hemisphere as well. Uh, it's very outward looking. But I'm also very involved in my own community as best I can. So I'm a member of the Tidy Towns and it's great to see some people from the Tidy Towns here. I'm a member of the Sustainable Energy Committee, which is supported by SEAI. And there's one in, in Maynooth, and there's a couple around the county, and there's one or two people from that group here as well. And um, I'm also uh, a member of uh, a number of other groups, like the walking group and that. So it's great, and it's great to be part of a community. And Taig, you know that people who are involved in community is good for their health and uh, Ronan, you know that very strongly as well in terms of blue and green spaces, but also community spaces. So I want to talk, ask, say, define first, what is a forum, this notion of a forum? And a forum goes back into the ancient history because there would have been Greek forums, there would have been Roman forums in their civilizations. And the doll and pol politics comes from this notion of having a space where people from different parts of the community can talk to each other. And before I get into showing you a slide about what the purpose of the Maynooth Green Forum is, I want to take you back. I grew up in the village of Summer Hill in South Meath. Uh, my people from the west of Ireland, uh, small farmers, not a, they were small, but the farm was small. And the forum used to be after mass. When Ireland was very homogeneous and virtually everybody went to mass, the biggest thing for some people they look forward to was after mass. So outside the church, people would just stand and they would chat about the football matches, they would chat about the prices of calves, they would chat about the weather. So there was just a space and that would sometimes go on for an hour and people gradually would move away when they had had their chat. I never realized at the time, but it really was a third space a space for people to chat and talk and share information. You found out the news, etc. And this is before, obviously before internet and even before the phone, the telephone. And I used to go on my holidays as I was growing up down to my uncle in Corrifin in County Clare, who was also farming himself and Rita. And when we go to mass in Corrifin, the very same process happened. Outside, big chat with people and all that, and that chat. And I never realized how much as we've modernized, we've lost that space. So the idea of the forum is to create an open space. So I'll just move to this slide, I have six slides. 
So the idea of the forum is to create an open space, a space for the coming together of people, just a coming together space, a space of connections where people can sort of say, heard about something or something like that. You can either raise a question or you can hear somebody, much like what you're trying to do here, Jim, which is just share things, like what you're going to be doing with the bikes outside, all these things, is just creating those connections as well. And that's what Green Campus should be doing. And particularly, it's great to have people who are not necessarily staff and students of the college here at these type of events, and the more we can do that. And that's one of the things that from the start of Green Campus that ha it has been a leading light in connecting the spaces together. It is also a space, a forum is a space to learn, to learn with people. When you hear the stories, the experiences of other people, you learn with them and you learn from them. So it provides that opportunity as well. And it's also ultimately a space to empower action. So that people know something that they can go and do differently. And farmers would have done that. Really, it was about, far, particularly the rural community at that time, farmers would hear about somebody who was trying a new crop or a new seed or things like that. So that's all a forum is. It is a very, very simple concept, but it's one that to a large extent has become foreign to us because there aren't much spaces for those forums now. So we had our first green forum uh, last week. Was it last week, Jim? Yeah. yeah, it was last Wednesday night. The college and the green campus enabled us to book a room for to have it. So we had it over in the School of Education building. And that's great that the campus would become a place where the community can use for meetings. There was people from outside the, the community, as in people in Maynooth, but there was people from other parts of the county as well who came along to it, along with some of the people inside. So we just met. It was a very open and broad agenda, and I'll talk a little bit about that at the moment, but there are some pictures of it, just the people meeting, people chatting and all that. And while we facilitated it to connect people for the first one, gradually it moves into a space where people begin to take greater ownership of it. Now, it's not the first time, because prior to pandemic, we had started that notion of having a forum. And Ty, it was interesting, you mentioned the notion of citizen science. Because in three meetings of the forum, which happened prior to the pandemic, two interesting, a couple of citizen science projects emerged from it. One of the people who came there, he was concerned about, in Selbridge, the quality of air. He was concerned because he had family and he was being told by the EPA that the quality of air in Selbridge was absolutely fine. But he felt himself it wasn't. So he raised this question and he had a science background and he started, and what he said is he was going to start making air quality monitors himself. And out of it came a couple of other people who were in an audience just like that audience who said, I'd be interested in doing that as well. And between that meeting and the next meeting, they got together and they started to make air quality monitors. They put a few up along the main square. And then when they came back to the next meeting, they just said, we progressed with that. And a few more people joined in on that as well. Will I cancel this, Jim? There's a, there's a call coming in there. Bernard, can't talk to you, Bernard, at the moment. Sorry. And, and uh, so, so uh, that, and they put up, and they put them up along the main uh, road in Selbridge, a couple across the bridge and all that, and they eventually put a few in Maynooth as well. But they built them, they put them up, and um, then one of them was able to upload the data from them onto a European website, so it became available. But they found things like the worst time to go for a run, say in the evening, in Selbridge is when people are coming home from work, because the main street is full of pollutants and that around it, which wouldn't have come out, didn't come out in the previous before. The other time is when parents are dropping their children to school to go for a walk and all that as well. And I thought that was interesting just as a citizen science finding. And the second meeting began to emerge the notion of actually doing water quality monitoring and another little group set off and they themselves. So going back to what I was saying in terms of the, uh, this doesn't go backwards I think, does it? Yeah, it does, yeah, okay, I'll go back. I just want to say that, because um, this notion of, of actually uh, 
going forward, a space to empower groups of people. So this is, the forum is not meant to be a committee. It's not meant to take on particular projects. It's meant to just connect people so they can choose to do things. So that's an example. Out of it came people who sort of decided to get together to plant hedgerows and things like that. So that's the notion of a forum. Does that make sense to you? And it's just a space to come together. So in many ways, it's nothing. And in other ways, it's everything. Just in the sense as the people would still, when I would go, you know, the older people in my home area would still talk about the fact that people used to meet outside mass. And there isn't a place now where they can meet in the same way. So the importance of, for every community to create a forum. We also, at the first one, ran a number of workshops just in that group, just talking, we paced, you know, what's the vision for Maynooth? What's your vision for Maynooth? To allow people to talk about their vision for Maynooth. And people like we have here, Mary, who's chair of the community council, who cooperates in setting up the forum as well. You know, the, you would have thought a lot about the vision for Maynooth. But a lot of people never get a chance to talk about the vision for the place and what, where they live. We also went on to talk about what are the gaps in providing that? What could be done or put in place in the local communities to help to, uh, achieve that vision? We went on and talked about, uh, in that workshop, about identifying what is restricting us for achieving that, from achieving that vision? And then how could we use a forum like this to create channels where we could connect? So when you look at things like that was identified as gaps, Connections were identified as gaps. Uh, funding was identified as gaps. Training to build capacity was identified as gaps. Communication, while there's loads, of, in a sense, we have too much communication and we haven't enough about the things we really need to know as well and finding that. Channels to government and council came out as a very strong connection because the frustration feeling that council does nothing for us or government does nothing for us and yet there are channels there for us to use, but we haven't, we don't educate our citizens enough on how to use those channels and to realize how they're there. So the forum is, because if we don't talk to each other, we can't create this body of people who seek to bring about change. So it's about creating that. It's about data as well. It's about connecting uh, people to talk to them about data, such as Stephen did here when I was in for the previous part, talking about the data, you know, to know that there is a million square feet of wild space in Maynooth campus for most staff would be very surprising. But I've also heard people on staff say, why aren't they cutting the grass? Because that's their sense of what this is about. They're seeing it as just cutbacks and nobody's cutting the grass anymore, rather than realizing there is an agenda. So data and information. And because it is a green forum, the idea was to create space, space for people who are concerned about environmental issues. That's essentially what's behind this. This is a space for anybody who wants to talk about, see, connect with other people around green issues. So obviously the groups like the Tidy Towns that have done so much, the SEC groups, the sustainable energy communities, those ones are active in that space. But lots of other people would like to make contributions in that area, in that way as well. So that's essentially what uh, came out as ter in terms of GAPS format. So look, at it's very early stages. I'm delighted to have a chance to profile it because Vanessa, who lives, uh, Vanessa Liston, who lives in Maynooth, and uh, Jenny uh, in the, Whitty in the uh, Maynooth Community Council, who lives in Maynooth, we were just kind of came together as facilitators to make this happen. But it did happen. And Jim and a number of other people turned up. And we appreciate that support. And we will have another meeting of that forum in five weeks' time, and then another one in six weeks' time. And we'll see how it is then. And if, there, if it's going to go nowhere, then that's fine. We can name that. Uh, and if it does, but just to connect people. But I know out of it, because we actually had people from Kilcock come to it. And what they want to do now is, is come to it, in a sense, officially. So they want to be there. And I know that there's, there was people from other parts of the county who are thinking about this as well. So. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's just to give you an insight into the Maynooth Community Forum. Is there anybody who, if, can I open it up for anybody who wants to make comments or make questions? I'd be happy to hear anyone that have. And thank you for listening to me.